Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma, also known as Made in the Moment. And uh, I accidentally went six months without making one of these videos. <laughs> so now it's mid-September and now you're getting the update of everything I made between April and August. Oh, and let me introduce you to my trusty assistant, Fred. I'll be talking about him more later. Before I get into it, here's a quick word from our sponsor. One thing I love to do is lay on my couch and scroll on my phone and look at things on my phone and stare at my screen for hours and hours and hours a day. And while it might look like I'm being lazy and not working, I'm actually sitting here updating my universe website on my phone. If you wanna make a customizable website from your phone, then Universe is the right brand for you. You can start from scratch, you can use a template, or you can try out Gus, the Universe AI assistant, which will help you put together a website based on the vibes that you like. I have used all three of these options. They have really great template choices, and the AI feature works really well too. I use Universe for all of my link and bio stuff, and I really like how customizable it is. I can choose what things I wanna add and organize the sections in a way that makes the most sense to me and to people who are coming to my page. I feel like recently, especially with the second channel, things are getting a little bit more confusing to figure out. I just spent about 15 minutes going through and updating all of my links using the drag and drop editor grid. It's super easy to add new lines and make the buttons bigger or smaller, depending on what you want. You can change fonts. They have text styles, so you can like change all of the titles at once. I also love the option to have a photo gallery of some of my work at the end of my links so that people can get an idea of what those look like. I just recently added tappable links to those too. So if you see a pattern that you like on that page, you can just click it and it'll go right to the video tutorial or the link to the pattern. So you can check it out right from there. You can also sell products directly on the Universe site with Universe Pro, which is $9.99 per month month or $71.99 per year. With this, you get a custom domain and lower sales fees than many other pattern selling platforms. A couple weeks ago, I made this website as a tribute to me and my best friend Jada and the AI wrote all of the text. Since my last video, Jada and I got a few compliments sent in. So I wanna read some of my favorites to you. You guys look like the really nice, cool people you want to approach and say hi to in public, but you're scared because they're so cool. And then the other one, you're both plus Grace, just sublime. If you wanna check out Universe for yourself, tap the link in my bio to join over a million other creators that are using the site. Thank you to Universe for sponsoring this portion of today's video and let's get back into it. So the first thing I made is something that I don't have any more, but it is my knit on fire sweater. I made this for an art trade with Zayu Studio who made me a really cool rug and this like rug tufted mirror in exchange for the on fire sweater. You should definitely go follow her if you like tufted rugs. There's a reason why I don't usually do art trades and it's because I just am not good at finishing projects on a timeline. It just makes me so stressed out and then I can't like knit. This one's so cool. People have been asking for a pattern for it and maybe I'll write one. Maybe, or I'll make you guys wait for a long time. I don't know. This one's gonna be tricky. I think it's gonna have to be graded because of the fire, the flame charts. And I wanna figure out a way to make it a little bit easier to make because this one just took me so long. The way the color work is designed is very complicated. So it'll be on the list. It is on the list, I know. But I also have some other pattern related projects that I have to work on first. So that is, that is perpetually chilling on the back burner. We'll get to it one day, I promise. But in the meantime, you can make the crochet version. And I'm actually working on a flame sweater right now because I don't have any currently. I always make them and then people buy them. But this one I'm keeping for myself. You guys can't have it. The next thing I made is this cowboy hat tapestry. It turned out really cool. Actually, I want to make more tapestries because I feel like the blues in this just don't really go in this room. I'm probably going to put this up in my bedroom, but this is cool. I made this to test out the new graph for my crochet cowboy hat vest. And I really don't have much to say about this except for this design went viral on TikTok in a bad way where I just had like hundreds of people thousands of people even telling me that it did not look like a cowboy hat and that I should get rid of the cow print because it looked bad. But people were very nice and helped me sort of edit it a little bit to make it more obvious what it was. I think what really helped was outlining the hat in a different color than the spots and also changing the button band color. So that's this. It was a super quick project. This is why I need to make more tapestries because it's just the front, you know, instead of having to make the front of the vest and the back of the vest or the sweater or whatever. Most of the ends are weaved in, but for a tapestry, like I feel like that's pretty good. The fact that I even weaved in like most of them is great. I think I could have done a better job mounting it on this dowel, but this was the first time I ever mounted anything. The next thing I finished is my stop effing up the earth tank. This is the front side of it. And this is the back. 
I'm so happy with how this one turned out. You may have heard me talk about this before, but this design with the globe and the text on it was actually my very first crochet pattern released as a tote bag. And I just sort of wanted to turn it into a vest because I thought it would be cool. I feel like when I released this, it didn't get a ton of traction, but it's a piece that I have worn quite a lot, actually. It's just very wearable. The cotton I made it in is super breathable and I really like the fit. I'm really proud of the fact too that the pattern has three different globe choices. So you can either do this one, which is Africa and Europe, you could do North and South America and you can do like Asia and Australia. This was also the first pattern where I started using a spreadsheet to calculate the made to measure sections of the pattern, which is an idea that I got from Jada, Mrs. Moon in Heaven. She had started doing this and sent me her template and was like, you have to do this, it's so easy and it'll make everyone's lives easier. So yeah, that's this one. I finished it and then took it with me to New York City where I went and dog sat for a few weeks, which was so fun. So I definitely have like good memories attached to this one. And again, like it really just is like my perfect ideal summer tank top. Next project, and I'm surprised that I actually remembered to include this on the list, but I made a little crochet vest to ask my girlfriend to our grad school prom. So one of my friends who I was in an opera with at school was the head of the like prom planning committee. They did a contest for promposals and the winner got a gift card to this ice cream place in Boston that I like. And my girlfriend loves jelly cats. So I bought her this bunny jelly cat and then crocheted it a little vest that said prom on it. The vest turned out pretty cute. A few criticisms that I have for it is that I should have used a bigger contrasting yarn between the letters and the background. And then also I had never made clothing for a jelly cat before because why would I have? And I forgot that jelly cats don't have shoulders. And so the vest fit weird when I put it on. Next thing I finished in May is the John Elliott Knits tapestry, the Go Knit Yourself tapestry. This one I have, it's, it's up on my wall. So I was a tester for this and I almost didn't finish because I ran out of yarn and then I was having like wrist pain. So I wasn't working on it very much, but I did finish in time. John Elliott is a great pattern designer to test for. And I had, this was actually my first double knitting project that I finished. Uh, before this, I had only made a little like swatch square. Next project I finished is my Lavender Haze top that I made for the Eras tour. So I actually don't have this either because I gave it to my friend Naya, who was one of my friends that I grew up with and now she's like this big TikTok star. So that's cool. But she was going to the Eras tour and this was one of her options for like something that she might wear to it. She didn't end up wearing it. She wore these outfits and she looked amazing. But I did give this to her because she's a big Swifty. I pretty much had decided that I was not going to make myself uh, anything for the Eras tour and I was gonna wear something else. But then for some reason, for some reason, three days before I was like, no, I'll make something. So I made this and honestly, it could have been better. The fit ended up being a little bit weird because I ran out of yarn. I didn't have enough time to really make it what I wanted it to be. But overall, I'm like really happy about the design. I liked how I had the, the colors sort of trickling down. I think the word color work looked good. The thing that I didn't love was just the back and where it cropped on me. I think it looks great on Naya and it would look great on someone else other than me. That experience made me realize why I shouldn't knit things for big events because it made me so stressed. It was just, it was fine, it was cute, but I could have worn something else and would have still had a good time at the concert and before and after and everything. And I should say, I did not spend $10,000 on a ticket. My seats were fine, like they were quite good. I could see the whole stage mostly, but it was sort of a side angle. Next thing I finished was this brown button up. This is something that I finished while I was in New York and also have fun memories from it. I'm gonna sweat so much right now. I made this because I wanted something that was like a little bit more neutral. I've been like wearing a lot of neutrals recently. I do love color and I love wearing color, but the past couple months, I've just like really been gravitating towards much more neutral things. And I made this with some alpaca yarn that I got from eBay a couple years ago, and I've used it for a few different things now. There's just so much of it that I've been still using it, and there I still have some left. I was gonna make matching shorts to match with this button up, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So I might actually make a matching tank top instead so that I can wear that a little bit more easily. I feel like the yarn is just a little too thin for shorts. But yeah, here it is. I like the buttons. So happy with the fit. Like really nice, relaxed, kind of oversized a little bit, but like in a way that fits me fit. And I've been wearing this one quite a lot. I actually really like 
how it looks now that I have blonde hair too. Moving on to June, the first project I finished is this over the shoulder boulder holder. For the one year anniversary of releasing the pattern, I wanted to make a free video tutorial version of it, which is available on my YouTube if you wanna follow it. I made this, basically it's just a better version of the pattern I made the year before and I added bra clasps to it. The reason that I didn't wear some of my other bralettes as much was because when, oops, if I tried to wear it underneath a shirt, there was like a tie at the back that sort of made a bump and I didn't like it. But this one, the fit of it just turned out amazing. There's the bra clasp. And I used yarn from Arcane Fiber Works for this one that they so kindly gifted me. I really like this colorway. Like it's color, but it's sort of neutral to me as well. Love to see that. This one I have worn quite a bit. It was like a big, big layering piece for me in the summer. Whenever I talk about this, I get people that make comments about like, oh, well, I wish I could wear that, but I, you know, my boulders are too big. So they would never hold up with crochet. And, and personally, while I don't have big boulders, this was tested on people with boulders of all sizes and it did work for them. My pattern also has some suggestions for how to make it even better for bigger boulders. I like the over the shoulder straps, but some of my testers opted for halter straps. And I do think that the bra clasp makes it better, just kind of helps keep the tension nice and even. The next project I finished in June was this blue mesh button up. I made this with yarn that I thrifted. I thrifted all this yarn and I used almost like 100% of it. I really like how this one turned out and I took this with me on a lot of trips over the summer. So I feel like it has a lot of good memories attached to it. My one complaint about it is that I did not consider how much this stitch would stretch. And so it ended up being a little bit too big for me after I washed and blocked it and all of that stuff. So probably at some point I will try and find this another home, but for now I'm keeping it because I can still wear it even though it's a little bit big. I wanted to make it oversized, but the mesh, the way the mesh stitch stretches, it just like sort of gets a little bit too baggy around the like butt area, but it still works like tucked in and like the shoulder parts fit me. But I am writing a pattern for this. I am, I promise. And for the pattern, I had one of my friends Taylor model for me. And here are some of the pictures. They turned out so well. You should follow Taylor on Instagram if you like what you see, their model, he just moved to New York City and he makes really cool like men's fashion content, which I love to see. This is one of my favorite outfits that he has put together recently. But yeah, really, really like this one. I worked on this one a lot while I was hanging out with Jada and Grace in New York City, which was so much fun. We have a good time together. The next thing I made is the goose vest. So this was a commission for Ashley Norton, who is one of my favorite like deep dive commentary channels and Funnily enough, she just posted a video like a couple hours ago today where she's wearing the vest and she gives me a shout out too. So that's super cool. Her partner commissioned me to make this vest for her birthday and I don't usually take commissions, but I thought it would be really fun to make something for her. So this is how it turned out. I love this piece so much. I kind of wish that I got to keep it. So Ashley, watch your back. I'm coming to steal it back. That's a joke, by the way. But if you don't know Ashley, you should go follow her YouTube account. I'll link it in the description. She does such a great job of like diving into really like niche topics. And all of her videos are really well done, really well explained. She's a very smart person. And this pattern is like third on my list of patterns that I'm gonna release. So that's it for June. And then in July, the first thing I finished was this <laughs> raglan that I started in April. I got almost all of it done except for part of a sleeve and then I let it sit forever. So this sweater, I followed my anything raglan pattern, but I slightly changed how the sleeves are because that pattern is for short sleeves. This was inspired by my dear, dear friend, Aiden Wells Crochet. She made a really cool bright green version. But yeah, Aiden calls scraps that are just like really short pieces of yarn, she calls them worms. So this is my worm sweater inspired by Aiden and all of her worms. If anyone has worms, send them to Aiden. I'm just kidding. Don't send them to her unless she asks. Only send consensual worms. I love this one. I can't wait for it to get cool enough that I can wear it. And I sort of want to make another one with some of my other shades of different colors that I have. I did send all of my purple worms to Aiden, so I'm not going to be making a purple one, but I have a lot of blue scraps green and like browns and whites and things like that. So 
maybe I'll make another one. But anyway, I really like this one. I'm not going to put it on. I'll put some pictures of what I look like in it. Took me a long time, but I love how it kind of looks like a sedimentary rock, you know, with all of the different layers. And it's fun for me to be able to go through and like see what yarn I used for what projects. Like I made a whole set out of this boucle yarn. I used this a long time ago in my wavy color block sweater, the very first one. Heart strings top. Oh, and then this yarn uh, was the cashmere yarn that I unraveled from a thrifted sweater and then re-dyed. And I have made a few balaclavas out of it too. So that'll be fun to match this with the matching balaclava once it gets to that time of year, which right now it feels like it could never be cool again. It's literally, it's so hot, but we'll get there eventually. And then I'll wish that it was hot again. The next thing is this pomegranate bralette that I made for a mutual of mine, Melissa. Melissa is actually one of the first people that commissioned me that was not like a direct friend. I met them on TikTok. They reached out to me and said that they were working on a music video for their song, which is called Cerulean. And they asked me if I would be willing to make something for them to wear in the video, which of course I said yes. And this is how it turned out. I think this is one of the cooler things that I've made. Like I, I it's just like these two crocheted cups and I hand beaded, I hand stitched all of these beads onto the cups. I think it turned out so cool. I was inspired by a bralette that's kind of similar with lemon slices. I can't remember the creator's name off the top of my head, but I'll put it on the screen. And so that's sort of what the shape was inspired by. And then the beads, I just, I thought it would look really cool as like seed texture uh, for the pomegranates. And it turned out great. It looks amazing in their music video. I'll link that as well if you wanna watch it. I totally recommend. The song is great, it's really fun. And this was just such a fun project to work on. It's very different than a lot of the other stuff that I make, but it made me get really like excited about beading and I kinda of wanna make more beaded stuff. I have a few beaded project ideas that I would potentially want to make, but I think that it would make more sense for me to do some sort of other medium. Like it doesn't really make sense for me to crochet a background and then cover it like completely in beads, you know? But, so that's the pomegranate bralette. It turned out so cool and it's in a music video, which is awesome. Next up, The Little Bunny Buddy by Crochet Me Zaddy. Okay, I'm gonna change how I'm sitting because I'm getting tired of sitting in this chair at normal. Started this while I was on my crochet trip with some friends and this yarn is from Jada's Scary Attic which I won't include a picture of it in here. Mm, maybe I'll ask her if I can. Oh, I just remembered she's on a flight right now. If she gives her permission, you will see a picture of her scary yarn attic. And that is where I got the yarn for the Little Bunny Buddy, which is a pattern by Crochet Me Zaddy, my good friend, Zach. And it's so cute. I do still think that the head is a little bit big compared to what it was supposed to end up as, but considering it is my first Emigurumi, turned out pretty cute. So yarn is from Jada, eyes are from Drew. He bought them for me at like a random Joann's on his way from Michigan to upstate New York where we all were, which was so kind of him because otherwise I probably never would have added eyes. He has a cute little tail and uh, I don't know if I said, but his name is Fred and he is my unofficial assistant. Fred was named by my wonderful girlfriend who really has a knack for naming stuffed animals, I will say. And I have been meaning to make Fred a little outfit. I actually did make half of a vest, but I never finished the front of it. But I think Fred would look great in a little vest. It's coming, one day I'll sit down and crank one out. Yeah, I learned a lot from this pattern. It's such a great pattern for if you've never done imigurumi before, because it is very basic in the sense that there's a head, there's legs, there's a body, there's arms. That is all pretty standard for amigurumi. And then the ears are just like a little bit fun, but it's so well-written. It's very simple to follow. There's lots of really good pictures throughout. Although I will say I was kind of bad. And because I was with Zach while I was working on it, sometimes I would just ask him to help me with something instead of looking at it in the pattern. And then he would be like, well, Emma, it's in the pattern. I'd be like, okay, yeah, but you're sitting right here. Can't I just ask you? Can't you just do it for me? But really it's very well written pattern. Like any, any question I had was in the pattern. Zach helped me with like how to stuff it too. I didn't realize you were supposed to stuff them so much. This thing is, is so solid. And apparently the stuffing like settles a little bit over time. Here he is, I love him. He's like a little funny looking, but in such a fun way. 
So that's it for July, actually. Now we're moving on to August. First thing I finished in August was these little, oh, sorry. First thing I finished in August was these mesh shorts, or as Zach would say, mish, mish. I need to practice his accent so that I can like say full sentences. Cause right now I can really only say Emma and mish. I'll add a clip of him saying it so you can see how well I'm doing it. Mish tank, mish tank dress. The two stripes, mish top, or is it mish top? But yeah, these mesh shorts, can you tell I'm in a big mesh phase right now? I am so happy with the color of these. I made these when I went back to New York for the NBC News thing, which if you didn't see, Jada and I were on the news for literally just being Gen Z and crocheting. That's kind of cool and kind of funny. I haven't really talked about this, but so we both got DMs from this person who worked at NBC and they were like, oh, we wanna do a story on Gen Z and crochet. And then they came to Jada's house and I ended up going back to New York. I had just been there like, a week before, but I went back and we filmed the whole segment in Jada's house. I think they were there for about three hours. The finished clip is like two minutes long. You can find it, I'll, I'll link it in the description. You can, you can go watch it. All of that to say, I worked on these while I was there. I filmed part of the tutorial actually at Jada's house and I'll be getting a, I'll be getting a video tutorial out for this eventually. Yeah, I think this turned out really cool. I like the drawstring thing and it's still so hot in Boston that I'll probably get a few more wears out of this before it actually gets cool. Next thing I finished is this zest vest, which I will, no, I don't wanna put it on cause I'm gonna have to take off the tank top and then it'll be a whole thing. But this is the very first thing that I ever designed back in 2021 when I was just like crocheting for fun and not as a job. I learned about this stitch, the Suzette stitch from a flight attendant. I was crocheting on a flight and this flight attendant came up to me and was like, oh, you're crocheting, that's so cool. Have you ever heard of the Suzette stitch? It's such a pretty stitch. And I hadn't heard of it, I looked it up and then I decided I wanted to make a vest with it. And so then I made it, this is not the one I made, I made a green one. This is it, this is also with yarn from Arcane Fiber Works and turned out really fun. I really actually don't have anything else to say about this. Oh, oh, the other thing I wanna say about this is that I worked on this project a ton too while I was traveling. I worked on this like, at the river, at the lake, um, in the car, on the way to things, at the Airbnb, when I was hanging out with people on the content trip. And so another piece that just will have like fun, fun, good memories attached to it. And last but not least is the final prototype of the mesh button up that I finished while I was traveling in the UK recently. So this is made with yarn that I unraveled from a thrifted sweater. And I feel like I've been using this yarn for things for so long and it just keeps, there's just, there's still more of it. This turned out great. I actually wore this for my uncle's civil wedding ceremony. So because of the way that they did the ceremonies, they had like a civil ceremony where they had like the legal ladies come and do the whole reading. And then their ceremony on the actual wedding day was like a little bit more chill. And they just like talked about how much they loved each other. And it was so beautiful, such a beautiful ceremony. Because I made this while I was traveling, I only had one button with me and um, I still haven't added the other buttons. I've been home for, like two weeks at this point. I also made this granny square wrist rest for my keyboard. It's just like a little pillow for my wrist to rest on while I'm typing. I did write a pattern for this, but it's really just, it's just three granny squares and then like some shaping and stuff, but it's been so useful. I actually probably need to give it a little wash soon because I've been using it every day and, and it's not like visually looking bad, but I just know that desks can get very like bacteria heavy. And then my other two honorable mentions are, I made a Hope Macaulay inspired purse. I don't know if the Hope Macaulay video is gonna be out before this or not, but if it is, you already have seen this. And if it's not, then go watch the video when it comes out. Uh, basically, Hope Macaulay came out with yarn and I bought it and tried it. And this is the bag that I made. Go watch my review for more thoughts on that. And then here is my Hope Macaulay inspired bralette, which I didn't, I couldn't be bothered to weave the ends in, sue me. Don't, please don't sue me. <laughs> yeah, this one turned out pretty well, actually. I just, it's not like, I don't really know what to wear this with. It did turn out pretty cute. I made some adjustments uh, to the design to make it like fit my style a little bit more, but overall really just, it's fine. Again, watch my review if you wanna hear all my thoughts. Talked forever on there, so. But that's it. That is six months of what I made. 
I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning of this year, I said one of my resolutions was actually to make less projects. And so far I am on track to do that. And the idea was that I would make less, but I would make sure to make projects that I thought I would wear more or use more. If you wanna stay up to date on my projects, instead of getting an update every six months on here, then make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok and also follow my second channel, Emma in the Moment. I've been making some really fun videos on there and that has been so much fun to get to do. So yeah, go check out those places. I also have a Patreon if you wanna support me on Patreon. And a huge thank you to Jolie, Scout, Jade M, and Janela for your support. Thanks everyone. I've been having so much fun making videos recently if you couldn't tell. And that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.